picture this. You meet a girl and tell her you're a manager at McDonald's when in reality you're working in the drive-thru. You think this artificially elevated employment status might make you more desirable, and it does. The girl sleeps with you. You're a rapist. You meet a Harvard graduate and you tell her you just graduated from Princeton. You actually graduated from New Jersey City University. The girl thinks you're really smart and you have consensual sex. You're a rapist. You meet a gold digger who's on the hunt for a financial safety net. You tell her you're a top Wall Street broker who earns hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. You're actually a Wall Street intern who earns less than 70k a year. But the girl thinks she's onto a good thing. The two of you have consensual sex. You're a rapist. That's right, feminists want to make it illegal to lie to women before sex. Months or even years down the line, they want to pursue lovers who jilted them by being dishonest before intercourse and hit them with rape charges. This campaign is being spearheaded by a woman called Joyce M. Short, whose blog suggests that her ex, quote, undermined my ability to have a loving family. For years, she's been on a crusade to have what she calls rape by fraud, i.e. lying before sex, to be instituted into law as a crime on a par with sexual assault. <coughs> But if you think that's crazy, listen to this. So imagine, you're in the bedroom, you're getting down to it, you're kissing, the clothes are coming off. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! She needs to see your passport, driver's license, proof of address, proof of income, divorce certificate, diploma, family history, and personal health records. Say what? Yes, Shaw actually states on her website that women should demand proof of all this before they consent to sex. She also invites her readers to grass up jilted suspects, naming and shaming them in the same vein as Meghan's Law, a list of sex offenders created in response to the death of Meghan Kanker, a seven-year-old girl who was raped and murdered. So all of these people, the vast majority of whom are men, are listed on this website with their full names, date of birth, marital status, how many children they have, city and location, with no actual evidence to prove they've done anything wrong. Putting them in the same breath as a paedophile murderer who killed a little girl. All because these jilted women claim that the men lied at some point during their relationship. And if you think that this whole idea is just the demented, deluded drivel of fringe feminists, then think again. Late last year, New Jersey lawmaker Troy Singleton introduced a bill that would create the crime of, quote, sexual assault by fraud, punishable by up to 20 years in prison. That's why Singleton has just introduced a bill that would make lying to get someone to have sex equal to rape. We think that it is important for folks to be protected. If this bill becomes law, major cases of lying and deception for sex could result in 10 to 20 years in prison. And underscoring again how the virus of third wave feminism is infecting the education system. Rape by fraud was a topic of discussion in a freshman high school health class. So just like college kids are being indoctrinated with the notion of campus rape culture, which has been completely debunked by Justice Department statistics, forget one in five, college girls are less likely to be raped than women in the normal population. The actual number is 0.03 in five. Now high school kids are being bombarded with the same fraudulent baloney. Which brings us back full circle. Just like the college rape culture myth, the scale of this rape by fraud fable has to be completely exaggerated by feminists. Because there is no real rape culture in the United States. There is a real rape culture amongst Muslim immigrants who abuse and traffic white girls in European countries, but feminists don't talk about that because it's not politically correct and because they're absolute hypocrites. While being outraged for years over a UVA rape scandal that was completely fabricated, Feminists ignored the very real and brutal home invasion rape of porn star Cytheria because of their dogmatic hate of women who work in adult entertainment. For the last two months, I have sat by in Gamergate and I have watched false faux victims utilize the world for their own personal and profit aims 
claiming victimhood over emails and over comments on Twitter. And here you have a woman who's a real victim of a real rape and a real assault. And those same women who claim that they care about women's rights have done nothing. They have done jack fing shit. And that pisses me off. The sheer lunacy of rape by fraud is merely another method via which feminists are indoctrinating women to live in a state of permanent victimhood. A condition of learned helplessness that completely contradicts the premise that feminism should be empowering to women. Short tells women to disengage from folks who tell you to get over it and just move on. Instead, she suggests that women embrace the notion that they have post-traumatic stress disorder, which is on a par with victims of violent military combat, terrorist attacks, and prolonged violent sexual abuse. Listen, it's obviously unpleasant if somebody lies to you just to get sex, but to then turn that into a personal vendetta, which drags on for years and decades, and to then try and make lying in relationships a criminal offense, on a par with rape, is clearly completely absurd from a practical and legal standpoint. Why don't feminists focus on supporting actual, verifiable rape victims and not ignore them because of political correctness or dogmatic ideological grudges? We have genuine issues with rape culture that need to be addressed, but instead feminists are steering phony outrage campaigns and entire movements around contrived ones like the college rape scandal myth and rape by fraud. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel. I'm Paul Joseph Watson for Infowars.com.